Hey you guys, I am so excited to show you guys one of my favorite ways to compost. This is a way that would actually allow me to do it in a small space. Obviously this narrow space, there's no way I can fit like a tumbler in here or something. So this method of composting would allow me to do it very efficiently, very effortlessly, and it's very hard to mess up this process, especially with like your leftover foods, your food scraps will be able to go in this pile and the turnaround time to break this down and turn it into usable soil is very fast. This is Bukashi composting I want to talk to you guys about. It has been used for hundreds of years in Japan, in Korea. They even apply this method in their natural farming. I really love this method because it is something that it's actually applicable to a small space just with like a, a five gallon pot or you know just a small bucket. I can fit this put it indoor. I actually leave mine in the garage in a five gallon pot. In the more common ways of composting that we know of, such as like tumbler or, you know, a hot or, or cold composting, you cannot put food scraps in there. But with this type of composting, you can put your food scraps, your leftovers, so beyond your, you know, your leftover pieces of vegetables, but your cooked foods, such as the, the meats, the small pieces of bones, the fats, the dairy in there, like your cheeses, and even like, Eggshells, eggshells, if you, especially if you crush it before you put it in, it will disintegrate in here much faster than the other ways of composting. The more organic materials you're able to compost, that means there will be less waste going in the landfill so that you would help reduce the methane gas. And, you know, research have shown that methane gas would actually contribute to global warming. As a gardener, I love using compost and I love that you know, I'm able to apply this rich compost in the soil to use for my plants. It would increase, you know, water retention in the soil, make it really fluffy and increase carbon and, and you know, humus, which would help just allow the plants to grow better for the root systems to take up more nutrients and to feed the microbes this is all just really excellent stuff for gardeners when it comes to composting there's basically two very different ways to do it one is called aerobic composting this method it's basically like your hot composting it is composting with air with oxygen by you know putting the greens and brown materials in a pile and you shovel it up to turn it or you can use a tumbler and uh, you know put your grass clippings your garden clippings in there and you would turn the tumbler the more you turn it the faster the materials would break down and this whole process would actually heat up the compost making it available for your garden to use in a matter of one to six months usually and one month is actually considered really fast but you'll have to as long as you get the ratios in properly and you constantly uh, turn it it is more work but you can make beautiful compost in a very fast turnaround and then there is the uh, verma compost which is also an aerated composting method this is actually another one of my favorite ways to compost i'll make sure to share this in another episode but this is using your worms you know like earthworms red wrigglers or even mealworms to feed them these food scraps that can take anywhere between a couple of months and then another very different method is the anaerobic method and this is the one that you compost things without oxygen or with very little oxygen or air. This is also called cold compost. This way of composting, you basically uh, leave things stagnant. So your browns and materials, your browns and greens, it's the same thing, but you don't move it and you just allow the microbes to slowly break it down in time. Another cold composting method is the Bukashi composting. So this one done by SD Microbes, I really love the way how it's designed to make it even less effort than a lot of ones I've seen online. These items came as a kit, but you can get these individually. So this comes in a really nice biodegradable burlap bag. This is the spent grain. As you can see, I'm almost done with this bag. <laughs> These spent grains came from an organic brewery in San Diego County and SD Microbes has taken this and basically repurposed it, given them a 
second life, if you will, by inoculating it with some good bacteria called Lactobacillus. This Bukashi compost, actually they call it beer kashi. Mm, smells like sourdough wheat bread. So that is the magic ingredient that goes into this to make the entire process work really well. These ones really helps with the fungal bloom and this fungal stuff is actually really good. It's actually good bacteria. In fact, this is the same type as the one that's in our gut, in our saliva, and they live in a, a low oxygen type of environment and they help break down food. So basically what goes in this compost is things that you can eat. Uh, you would put anything that is still good. So nothing with bad moldy food. So you don't want to put any of that in there that would actually you know make it compete with a good bacteria what makes this bukashi kit different than others is that it does not have a spigot so any kind of five gallon bucket would work they actually suggest that without the spigot they find that it works better the buckets with the spigot would actually allow air to go inside which would cause the fermentation to go bad sometimes and then you would also have to release that liquid like empty out that liquid on a regular basis so with this thing it is totally quick and easy i I just don't get lazy doing this kind of composting, you know? It's so quick. Every day I would just grab my little uh, container with food scraps and I'd layer it in here. Third thing I want to talk about that it comes with this kit is this beautiful, sorry, this is used up so it's not that lovely. <laughs> but this is the, uh, the airtight sealed lid that it comes with. And I really love this lid. This is the lid that makes all the difference in this uh, Bukashi composting. Uh, usually if you don't have a lid like this and you want to do it in a uh, compost things in a, you know, anaerobic environment is that you would have to maybe put a plate with a, a brick or a stone or something to compress the food scraps in the bucket to release all the air and then you would have to close the lid on top and make sure you close it well so no air can get in. But with this type of lid, it compresses everything down so that way you can also put more food scraps in there. You know, as you layer, it takes out all the air. It is so cool. It makes it super easy to do. Are you back to helping me, boy? So you would start off by putting a, a little layer, like a thin layer of the spent grains on the bottom. Put a couple layers of food. Every couple inches of food scraps in, you would put another layer, like a thin layer. So that usually is about a couple handfuls of uh, spent grain, just kind of sprinkle on, on top. You can even put small pieces of bones in here. What I really love doing is to just save small little tissue, you know, papers or stuff like that are still biodegradable, even though they're not food scraps, but you know, they still go in here for me just because I kind of think of it as helping to absorb a little bit of that liquid. So you're kind of layering it every single time you put in some fresh materials all the way to the top or wherever you like to stop, I guess. Let's talk about how you'll know if this thing has gone bad or not. If you see white, fluffy, fuzz, basically, kind of mold in there, that is the good stuff, okay? That is coming from uh, the spent grains that's been inoculated, so it's making the fermentation happening in this bin. So the bin would have the sweet, vinegary type of smell, I don't know about you, but I think it smells pretty good. Some people might find it being pungent, but it's definitely not like rotting food kind of smell. Especially if you're putting meats in here, it you would imagine it smelling really terrible, but it does not smell like rotting food or rotting flesh at all. It Everything in here just smells like a kind of a good sweet vinegar. That's how I would describe it to be. So definitely nothing rotting. Um, and then it's like white fuzz. If you see that there's like color mold in there or gray color or some sort of color that is not white, you can scoop that out and um, you know just toss it out. Or you can start fresh with this if you don't feel comfortable uh, leaving the rest in there. I actually haven't seen any of that happening in here as long as I keep in mind putting everything that's not moldy, like things that are still good that goes in here everything will be fine. 
after you fill up this bucket all the way to the top, you would just wait for two weeks. That would allow the fermentation to happen in there, especially with that top layer of the fresh ones you just put in. So after two weeks, that's when you put it in the garden. When you bury this fresh Bukashi compost in the soil, you should wait about two weeks for it to continue breaking down, and then you can start planting in that area, especially with plant starts, young plants. You don't want it to you know, be planted in this spot the first couple of weeks. Being in a small space, I don't have the luxury to go around burying these in the ground. So I found this way to work really well that I'm gonna share with you guys. Here we have a 27 gallon container. We're gonna dump the soil in. This is some potting soil that I've grown other things in. So I'm just going to freshen it up with some Bukashi compost. Now, because I don't have a lot of ground space and all the beds are always just taken up, there's nowhere I can kind of dig a size hole or anything to pour a whole five gallon bucket of compost in. So instead, I'm going to do it in a container. If you guys got land, you can dig in and dump the whole bucket in. Or if you have, you know, just some space in your raised beds, you can do the same thing. All right, let's pretend that this is just some random open space that I have in the ground or in a raised bed. All you gotta do is dig a trench and um, your trench actually be a little much bigger than this. <laughs> I got some lemongrass in here as well. Got a little bit of everything. Lots of banana peels, eggshells. Let's just dump this whole thing in. Ooh. Let's pretend that this container is a trench that I've dug. So there's some soil on the bottom and then I would put all of this Bukashi compost in and then I'm going to layer some potting soil on top to bury it. Now if you were actually in a raised bed or in the ground you would just basically backfill your soil to cover. This is some really used up soil that I grew lots of different things with in this container. And I'm just going to loosen this up a bit. So I dug a hole in the center and I'm just going to put some worms inside just to mimic as if, you know, this container was uh, actually a hole that I dug in a raised bed or in the ground. Now I'm only doing this step because I am starting out the very first time in this container. In the future, I'm not going to need to put any more worm castings or worms in this bin. And then if you're composting in the ground or in a raised bed, you will also skip this step. That is it. You can see the soil is pretty bone dry. All right, I'm just going to gently cover this up. I'm not gonna close it all the way, but just gently cover it. Uh, it's not really a big deal to cover it or not in Southern California since we don't get a lot of rain. But because I have no drainage in this container, I'm just going to gently cover this up. That's it. I'm going to push it to the side and we'll come back in two weeks. This is where I have the Bukashi composting buried in. This has been in here for about three weeks. I think I forgot to film at the two weeks in, but two weeks in, it actually looked like it was mostly gone. If I try to chop things down or even throw it in a food processor to, to get it more fine, you know, the, the finer the things are, the more surface space there is and the faster uh, they would decompose. So let's take a look at this. Oh my goodness. It is so moist and wet in here. Remember like three weeks ago, I was putting in like bone dry soil. Three weeks later, this thing looks so wet. It, yeah, when things break down, it generates heat. It just gets a lot of moisture in here. I'm seeing some worm action here. Oh, here it is. 
digging, I'm digging, I'm digging. Yeah, I'm feeling the heat here. So this is where that pile is and it's all like broken down. Most of it is. Just like little pieces of uh, like longer fiber strands are still intact, but they are breaking down like this thing here. It's just kind of got really spongy. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't smell so bad. It smells like soil now. Wow. And then there's some more. Looks like there's, uh, I even have like hair in here and hair actually takes a long, it's a good source of nitrogen. Yeah, as so you guys see that, this is what it looks like in three weeks. <laughs> Let's load this bed up. Oh, here's another avocado seed there. It's like, it's, yeah, this thing is still hard. But it's unbelievable how fast this stuff just turns into soil. Here's the cob here. Okay. Corn of cob is um, hollow inside, so okay, you can see it's like turned to softening. So each time when, you know, the composts are considered uh, finished more or less, I can take it out of here to use to apply it, like top off the beds or mix it in with my other soil so I can plant new things. Or in this case, I am filling up my empty raised bed here. I'm just going to take, I think the most I would take out of here each time is about um, half of this container, just so I don't have to keep dumping in fresh container, I mean, soil. Of course I can do that too. If I think this is like this compost would really mix in and enrich the soil that's been uh, used to grow things from like previous seasons or something. So I would just keep some of the soil in here. And uh, once the, that bucket of compost is done, I will pour that in here and bury it and start all over. Now that this bucket is empty, I don't have to wash it. You can if you want to, but I'm just going to retain all that good bacteria in this bucket to help everything ferment uh, faster and better. Kind of like to keep the rim around here clean though. So I think I'm just gonna take a towel and wipe off this about oh, an inch or an inch and a half the top. So that is how I would do it if I don't have ground space, especially with those of you who practice the no-dig method. I think this is a really great way to uh, go about finishing up your Bukashi composting. I can't wait to get some plants into this Bukashi enriched soil. If you guys want to pick up some of this stuff, be sure to use my affiliated link. I will put that down below the description box for you guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in, you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video, learned one of my favorite ways to compost things even in a small space. If you guys like this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more. And uh, if you want to pick up some plants and seeds, be sure to go check out my store. Thank you for your support. I will see you right back here in the next video. Bye, guys.